Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about risk compensation. I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of what's going on, a little bit of a real perspective on what people are being comped and paid in the industry, um, again, being validated from me internally. So I have seen many reports on the internet on crazy salary ranges, crazy salaries, and often they're just not very realistic. Um, even when I see reports that are like risk management at a bank. So it's very specific to what I'm doing. Um, again, I know my comp structure from the banks I've worked at. Um, I have friends that work at other banks. Like I have a general ballpark of where we're seeing salaries for the industry here. And yet I continually see nonsensical numbers. So let me just define risk here real quick. Cause I know everyone's going to ask risk management is no different than quantitative finance. Um, again, hedge funds and all that might differentiate them. And so these are quants and these are risk management. Um, at a bank, quants are risk management. There is no quant team at a bank. They do not exist. Um, a bank has risk managers, which are actually quants. They're doing quant work. We just don't call them quants because regulators and the U.S. public doesn't want to hear, you know, J.P. Morgan and Bank of America's quants blow up another $400 million loss on the mortgage portfolio. Like, they don't want to hear it. They want to hear, you know, these banks, J.P. Morgan and Wells Fargo, and they've got risk managers in place and quantitative risk management. Um, so that's what they're going to be labeling us as. Again, quants at banks here. This report covers a little bit of the uh, buy sides, so the investing side here. Um, oddly enough, they're adding in risk managers. I'm guessing you're still doing model development, um, but the buy side is very odd. Uh, they probably take a risk piece of it and think risk is different um, than quant finance. Um, I'm not going to get into these details because that's not what this video is about here. But if you search and put on the link below, um, again, I'm not sponsored or paid or discussed or anything, but Selby Jennings is one of the recruiting firms. They spam me constantly, which is quite annoying. Um, but that being said, they have a pretty good report here. So I'm going to put a link below. You can click that. Um, you'll see the screen. You hit download the report and this pops up. So this PDF here, um, again, I think this is the 20, oh, 2022 version of this, at least that's what it says on the bottom here. Um, I believe there's a 2023 one as well, but you can find these, or maybe this is the one they sent me. Uh, but anyways, this report is pretty accurate, even if you think about being in 2022. If you scroll through, there's a whole discussion on risk and management and, you know, how risk management has led up to, you know, all these different trends and policies. And there's a whole section on credit risk and wholesale credit risk and market risk and liquidity. Um, these sorts of things can be interesting to read. Um, both if you're in the industry or you're a student, you kind of get an idea of what's going on here. Um, but I'm going to skip all this because that's not what I really care about today. There's even a discussion here on the buy side risk and how that's growing and enhancing. And they're starting to realize they need people to look at risk too. And more specifically, we'll dive down here um, into the salary overview compensation at a glance here. So this should give you an idea of the compensation and the title structures at a bank. Okay. This is how it is. Um, this first slide here, again, this is slide uh, 14 is New York city. So we're going to look at this one first, and then I'm going to show you something else with other cities. What might surprise many people is model validation is called model risk, model risk management here. It is often the highest paid position. So those building models typically get paid less than those actually uh, managing model risk. This has to do with the amount of detail. And anyways, there's a bunch into it, but uh, validation teams have to know the detailed aspects of quantitative finance and model development far deeper than model development. They are responsible uh, to catch issues and risks with the model that are statistically based and business based. Um, they're called second line of defense. So first line of defense is the people building the models and using them. Second line of defense is going to be those that are going to be actually catching all these issues. So you need a little bit more knowledge and depth here. Um, if you look though, model risk or risk analytics, which I don't know why they lump these together, but you can see it pays slightly more than the other positions. If you look at the base here for an analyst, uh, you're looking at 120 to 130. Uh, market risk is 90 to 120, which shocks a lot of people because they go, oh, market risk is so exciting and I want to be on the exchanges and I want to be involved with interest rates and, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, market risk is flashy and people hype it up because it's kind of the Wall Street -y thing to do, um, but it pays a little bit less. Uh, again, about the same as credit risk, which I've spent much of my career uh, doing validation in credit risk, but I've also done validations and operations and market risk and all that. Um, I currently work in credit risk modeling now as I run a team doing that. Um, but again, and then you have operational risk, which oddly pays the least. Um, I think part of the reasoning for this is because operational risk also has a very limited data sets and often they do kind of 
qualitative risk assessments. Um, so what I mean by this is you might not have enough data to build a model to assess the risk. Um, you'll have to do a little bit of blending of modeling and non-modeling. I think this is why it typically pays a little less. There's some really cool things you can do with operational risk because I've worked in some of that space a little bit. Um, but again, there's really not that much difference. That's kind of part of this point here, right? I want to show you guys is, you know, you're looking at between like 85 and 130 ish in New York City. Again, the range is wider. Maybe you have a little bit of experience or not, uh, what degree you have. So, you know, is it a top master's degree or just a master's degree from a generic school? Again, you have to have a graduate degree to work in quantitative finance and risk management in these positions. Um, some of the lower jobs here too, I don't know if they're kind of adding them in here as well. There are things called model governance, which are non-quants. So non-quant comp uh, would be people on the lower end of this. So you might have somebody making 80,000 or 85,000 at the start, and then you might have somebody um, paying 120 or 110 for a model developer with a master's degree. Um, again, but typically when we talk risk management, we typically don't talk governance. That typically goes into another space on this. So when you look at the bonus piece here, which they don't really explicitly state, but they're going to show you the total comp. The total comp is going to be, you know, about 10, 20, 30 grand more, depending on the firm. Um, again, this is all New York City. You'll see these numbers will give you the total comp of some of these employees. Again, it's like, you know, 100-ish, 95, I guess, down here, like 95 to 160, which is a huge range. You know, it's pretty good comp. It's pretty good for a first job here. And then if you look at the progression here on these, you can see that... Um, we start off in like the hundreds range, 120s, and then you have an associate AVP and you have a VP. Then you have an, a director or executive director. And then finally you have managing director, which is kind of the top here in any sort of bank. Um, again, the comps can get huge um, with your bonus piece here. So typically when you start a career, you have a lot of base and a smaller bonus. And then as you grow, uh, your salary is not going to grow a whole lot, but your bonus potential can grow a lot depending on how well the firm does. And yes, it is possible to make a million dollars as people have asked about. Um, you'll see here that most of the managing directors are making about a half million to a million. Now that is a huge spread, right? A half million to a million is double. Like that's a double half a million is a million. Uh, that's a really big spread here. That's just what you're going to see based on bonuses, performance, team structures, dynamics. Like there's a bunch of things that play into that. But this kind of gives you a baseline of what you should expect in a career for risk management. Now, this again is for New York City. Now, if you scroll down, there are other slides. Now, you notice Dallas is number two on this list because Dallas is a pretty big hotspot lately. Uh, but Dallas is number two. If you look at these salaries, these are about the same here. You're going to see total comp, again, is 450 to 800,000 for a managing director. Again, this like end of your career. The beginning analysts are going to start like at 100 to 120. Again, market risk or people actually developing credit models is like 85 to 105. Uh, and then again, you'll see it has a similar progression up the chain here. Now, again, these are all a little bit lower, five, ten thousand dollars lower for an analyst position um, compared to New York City, but they don't adjust you for the cost of living that much. So let me tell you, when I lived in New York City, it was double the cost of what I paid uh, to live in Dallas here. Now in Dallas, I have one and a quarter acres, uh, 2,800 square foot home. Like I live in a nice, nice area. Uh, in New Jersey, when I lived in New Jersey and commuted to New York City, I worked in the tri-state area and it was a two bedroom apartment uh, in New Jersey. So, I mean, it depends what you're wanting here. It depends standard of living. It's really hard to compare cost of living uh, across them. But let me tell you, it is much, much cheaper to live anywhere besides New York. You can join as many job opportunities. It's harder to jump around. Dallas is growing though. It's a pretty big hotspot. And if you scroll down through this report, um, they have Tampa. You can see the numbers are pretty similar. Again, a little lower. Uh, Charlotte, again, similar to Dallas, right? Not whatnot. And San Francisco, which again is a little bit higher because cost of living is higher, but not that much. And they have Wilmington. Uh, and then they have a summary on this. But I'm hoping you guys can look at these uh, salaries, these numbers, and get a realistic expectation of what to expect um, to make for your value here. Now, I have seen other reports from other recruiting agencies, which have ridiculously high numbers. Now, there's going to be a bias from recruiters because they want to sell companies on a higher salary. So when they come and approach me, they say, oh, Dimitri, you, you're looking for an associate here, right? Uh, we got an associate and they're going to be 150 or like $180,000. That's just what the market rate's going to be. Um, the reason recruiters will lie and tell you that from a variety of firms here uh, is they get paid a percentage of that. So 20, 30% of the salary. 
So if they get you more money, uh, then they get more money, but they're also desperate to place you. So a lot of them will maybe lower that if a company argues or haggles with them. Um, Selby Jennings numbers here though, I find are actually really accurate from my own personal experiences. Uh, these align with what I know other people make in a variety of these positions across kind of the board here. So just a few things to think about is comp here and risk management. Again, it's pretty good comp, it's good salary. And if you're doing what you love, why would you not do this? Um, it's great money. Trust me, if you live anywhere but New York City or San Francisco, uh, this is great money to live on and a really solid career. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time. Mm -hmm.